We're back on the Audi and we need, a, we need to fabricate a lot of little pieces. So I thought before we get to that, we would make a nice little fabricating table to help us position everything. Seen, uh, seen some neat ideas on the internet about using a bowling ball. So we're gonna do that with our little MP140 Lincoln welder. Problem is I am out of MIG wire. So we're gonna be stick welding that today. Here we go. All right, we really want to thank Lincoln Electric Canada for helping us out to be able to make videos like this. And we want to make it so that the average person is able to do this in their own garage. Now, um, you're going to need some parts. Uh, we just happened to get a call from Gary who got into a car accident on the way to bowling. He broke his leg and his bowling career is done. So I grabbed the bowling ball out of his trunk. Um, he won't be driving for a while because he lost his license. So we took the front rotors off his car. We took his uh, bottle jack out of the trunk and we have some random steel and aluminum laying around. We need some legs, uh, we need some random pipe and tube, a piece of threaded rod with a couple of nuts on it, and a little table to do the actual fabricating on. To get started, we need to work from the top down. We need to know what our finished height, what our desired height is gonna be. What we're gonna start with actually is our bowling ball. I found out that you can actually tap a bowling ball enough that you can thread in threaded rod. Now, if you don't have access to three quarter, you can go thinner, you can glue it in, you can JB weld it in, um, and we will JB weld this in and lock it down with this nut. But for now, this is going to be our working height. I'm going to leave this nut in the middle and I'm going to weld a cable to it, to one of the legs. So if I spin the ball around, this nut is gonna stay in one spot and will allow me to spin the ball around with the table while keeping my ground. So I can connect my ground to one of the legs, not to the table, which is constantly gonna be moving. So I'm going to weld a flat piece of plate on the top and I'm going to bolt that to this piece of aluminum. This is a piece of I-beam that I just cut the, the other eye off. Now it's a C. Uh, Sawzall with a wood blade works the best for cutting aluminum off like that. So I'm going to weld this to the table. My bowling ball is going to be this height and my legs are going to stop just right about here. So the legs are going to be 10 inches lower than the total working height of the bench. So number one thing about fabricating and welding and tigging, migging, brazing is you need to be comfortable. Uh, the, the bar stools is kind of the nicest way. Gives you room to spin around. There's nothing restricting. There's no arms on the, on the chair to get in the way of your elbows. It has a spot for your legs. And I basically want the, the jack to be um, the same foot height as these. So I can, I can transfer my legs constantly back and forth. I'm a taller guy, so your height will be completely different than mine, but I want the table basically right about here. 44 inches is total table height. So if we subtract the 44, subtract the 10 from the distance of the ball, I want my legs to be 34 inches long. Let's go outside, see if we can find some metal and we'll cut those legs to sets. Okay, so this is a this is a headache rack out of a scrap truck um, that came into the yard and basically I see one leg here into an L and then another leg here into an L. So we'll cut up the other side and this side and we'll have our legs. What did we say? 34? 34 inches is total table height. 34. debate as to whether you want four legs or three. This table will never wobble. The only thing is it might be a little bit more tippy as a whole. These are at least 3 16 thick. If you go with thinner metal uh, and you don't have the weight, you might want to consider four legs. We're gonna go with three. Now the bowling ball is gonna sit on this ring right here. On the top rotor, I'm going to cut the outside all the way around here and get rid of this whole hub. That'll give me more rotation of my bowling ball. <laughs> All 
right, so we verified that these arms are square, using a square. Um, we've got the bottom rotor to set the spacing at the bottom. We've got the top rotor held in place by magnets and just a C-clamp. Um, check the, the level of the arms using a, an actual bubble. Um, but we're ready to uh, put some weld at the top. And this one slid down just a hair. At the end of the day, this bottom rotor only has to move up and down a sixteenth of an inch to take the pressure on and off the bowling ball. So I'm confident we have that. We're going to weld uh, these top pieces in place and then we'll get going on the bottom mount for the jack. Stick. So I laid a couple brake rotors on the on the ground, and this is roughly where I want my jack to be. I'm going to put a spring on it so that goes up, pump the jack going up. I need to fill this distance with something, so I found a piece of pipe. I'm going to measure this distance, and then I'm just going to cut a slit in my pipe, weld a piece of steel in the flat about halfway in. The jack will push on that, put a plate on the top, and that will weld to my brake rotor which will then encase the bowling ball. Now, this jack is not a quick release jack. If you're gonna go out and buy a jack, a quick release is definitely the way to go because you can just have a lever, one step, it'll push up against the quick release and it'll release everything. I have to figure out some sort of twisting thing to relieve the pressure on the jack. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. We'll play by ear as to how much uh, we're gonna do. Um, but for now, let's get back into welding. Here we go. So we're using a 332nd 7018 rod. They're kind of hard to start, but once they burn, you get a pretty decent bead. It takes a little bit to get used to. This plate is about all that this welder can do, but we still get pretty decent heat penetration. You can see the, the heat marks coming over, and the more you weld, the, the nicer your beads start to look. This plate pushing on this rotor from the bottom up, this will never go anywhere. Um, we're going to weld this uh, plate in the middle, then we'll trim the plate afterwards. Then we'll weld this tube to the plate right here. Thanks. All right, so at this point, we just kind of want to do a dry fit. We've got our top welded, but there's lots more welding to do on the rotor yet. We want to get our heights uh, right, make sure that we're happy with everything, that the ball is kind of working, it's not bottoming out on the road or anything silly like that. You can still tilt this whole thing sideways. I still have that inch before it tightens up. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna clean this bottom rotor and I'll mark it and then we'll weld this bottom rotor in place and then we can actually uh, crank on this and uh, see where we're at then. Okay, so this bottom rotor doesn't have to necessarily spin like this because the ball will spin on its own, but it does need to go up and down. If it gets tight, you can, you can just take your grinder, make a little flat spot and just spin it so that it hits the flat spot. But with the three legs, it allows you to move one leg in or out just to give it that, that little bit of clearance that you need. So I found a little shim to cut off from something else, shoved that in between. Um, I'm happy with that spacing. So now we can weld this thing uh, solid on the bottom as well. So here we go. Is another sheet of aluminum I just got from uh, VNR. Fairly thick, 
but I want to go with aluminum because it's light. I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to pop the I-beam on there and just weld it. Uh, there's a spool gun attachment you can get for the 140, so it'll actually do aluminum as well. Now for aluminum, we do need 100% argon. Otherwise, the welds are going to look kind of poo-poo. I'm gonna take this plate and weld it to the top here. I'll drill four holes and I'll bolt that to the table. And we're almost there. A little bit of uh, rust to take care of and some paint. We got a nice fab table. Here we go. corners off we don't get any of this in the gut but that's about the right height lock it in place put that on a spring it's good for when uh, Bob the boss comes a nice little thing to draw pictures on and whatever that's exciting I like it okay so for the quick release I put a 7 16 bolt there that I can put the spring over top and I made this bracket with a hole that I'm going to weld right here then I've got the normal jack release I drilled two holes through it this will go like this and that will go through there like that and then I'm just going to have a little lever I'm going to cut this out the lever is going to sit on the spring and then a pedal that comes out and up so to release it I just push down it'll drop the jack down and then the spring it should be enough to tighten it again uh, for this handle i'll take and extend it out the back and then just put this spring at the back that will pull this lever up put it to the right level wherever i wherever i'm happy and then um, to release it pedal on the left to tighten it pedal on the right okay so i bolted this piece in so i can still remove that i put a little lever off to the side about the same height as my handle um, this will be the release. I want to make sure that it actually releases. Um, I'll put a little tack on the end of this handle. That's about the right length. I just want it sticking out a little bit. I'm going to weld this solid. And I think that's about it. Fantastic. I will cut some holes into the plate there. And we're golden. Here we go. The best way to cut aluminum is just a wood bit in either a jigsaw or a sawzall. I just drilled a half inch hole in there on either end, a double on one side so that I could get my blade in there, cut it, and basically no matter where I put my vice grips now I can reach part of the table. For the grounding I just took a piece of electric fence and welded it to the post and to the nut. I can spin that, if I could even add one on each leg, that might help if I don't get enough grounding. But electric fencing is heavy enough that um, it'll turn the nut, so I won't be walking the nut up on top, and uh, I have my ground. So, I'm gonna clean some stuff up and uh, give her a coat of paint. Here we go. Now before we paint it, we'll use this crud cutter just to take off all the rust, brush it on, let it sit for 10 minutes, pressure wash it off, and we are good to go. Huh. 
All right, so even though Lincoln Electric makes heavier duty welders, we wanted to show that this little MIG Pack 140 is a very versatile little welder. I do really like it. Um, the stick, even though it was all I could do to weld it, it still did it. And we could prove that by showing that the table will work. It'll be in future videos. The aluminum spool gun is super handy. The only thing you gotta be cautious of about that is before long, all your neighbors will be having you welding their lawn furniture and their golf carts and whatever else. So be prepared to spend some late nights in the shop but extremely handy. We're gonna get into some TIG welding with the welder as well. We are going to get Randy from Chrome to Envy to hang out in the shop a little bit here and there. We're gonna be making some videos basically on um, how to start as a beginner because I'm gonna say I am a beginner. I hope you guys are gonna stick around for that. Um, we'll have some more Lincoln videos coming up showing some of their other equipment. But we really want to thank Lincoln for helping us out. So if you like these videos, if you want to see something more along the same lines, uh, definitely comment. And uh, don't forget to join our Facebook group. Remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go.